Namaskar and welcome back to Aviation Avi, go where you feel the most alive. In today's video, we'll talk about wildlife hazard management, why it is so important and how is wildlife hazards managed at an airport. This presentation was prepared by Mr. Shantanu and I am Ms. Anvesha Pal presenting it to you. So without any delay, let's get started. This video on wildlife hazard management will be divided into two parts. The first part will make you understand why are airports concerned about wildlife at all? What does a typical organizational setup within airports look like for wildlife hazard management? And how is wildlife hazard identified and risk assessment is done regarding the scene? Further, we will move on to understand wildlife management program and risk reduction techniques and in the part two of this video we will understand active methods of bird control wildlife strike reporting and record keeping and the icao bird strike report information system so comprehensively with two parts of this video we'll understand wildlife hazard management at an airport as you can see in the image this is one of the images which aviation enthusiasts have registered in their mind it is the U.S. Airways Flight 1549, which was regularly scheduled U.S. Airways flight from New York LaGuardia Airport to Charlotte and Seattle in the United States. On the 15th of January 2009, this Airbus 320 serving the flight struck a flock of birds shortly after takeoff from LaGuardia, resulting in the loss of engine power. Given their position in relation to the available airports and their low altitude, Pilot Sullenberger, or also known as Captain Sully, decided to glide this airplane to ditch onto the Hudson River near Midtown, Manhattan. All the 155 passengers on board were rescued by nearby boats. There were no fatalities, around 100 people were injured, and some were seriously injured. But what is meant to notice, even with such engine failure, there were no fatalities. The time from the boat strike to ditching was less than four minutes and this was one of the miraculous landings we have seen in the field of aviation. So now you can understand what an impact wildlife or birds can have on aircraft operations. It can cost lives and impact safety of aircraft operations severely. Why are airports concerned about wildlife? Like all human beings, we need water, food, shelter, and a safe environment for our survival. And same is the situation for wildlife. They are attracted to the airport environment in response of the availability of food, water, shelter, and safety of a rel relatively predator-free environment. The presence of wildlife on and around the airport can lead to wildlife strikes, like we saw in the case of Airbus 320 that took off from the LaGuardia Airport. Almost all airports are built over a large area which is far away from the city which was previously inhabited by animals and wild birds. Thus, we can understand that we have encroached upon their area and it becomes our moral responsibility to rescue them. We have understood that the presence of wildlife which can be birds or animals on or in the vicinity of the airport poses a serious threat to aircraft operational safety. Operators of licensed aerodrome are thus required to take necessary actions to identify, manage, and mitigate the risk of aircraft operations posed by wildlife by adopting measures likely to minimize the risk of collisions between the wildlife and the aircraft. The responsibility is to minimize this risk to as low as reasonably practicable. To make this presentation, we have taken the help of DGCA car. Section 4, Series B, Part 1, Para 9.4. ADAC, that is Aerodrome Circular, Advisory Circular Number 6 of 2017, Air Safety Circular 02 of 2011, ICAO DOC 9981, Part 2, Chapter 6, and ICAO DOC 9137, Chapter 3. Now that we have understood it is the responsibility of airport operator to make the airport environment safe from any wildlife activity 
and ensure the safety of aircraft operations. So let us understand how a typical organizational setup within the airport looks like for the management of wildlife hazard. The following are the roles and responsibilities of personnel associated with wildlife management and should be present at an aerodrome in addition to accountable manager and the safety manager as they contribute to the effectiveness of wildlife management program. Depending on the scale of operations at an aerodrome, appropriate to the size and traffic and complexity, some of the functions can be combined. As we can see in the image, on the top we have the airside in charge under whom we have the WHM officer and the airside duty manager. Under the a WHM officer or the senior line manager, we have the wildlife control coordinator and under the wildlife control coordinator, we can have wildlife chasers. So one by one, let us understand the roles and responsibilities of these positions. Under the air side in charge, who is overall in charge of the air side management, we have the line, senior line manager looking after WHM. So this senior line manager is responsible for formulation and implementation of wildlife management program and providing resources for the effective implementation of the WHM plan. The wildlife coordinator is responsible for day-to-day -day management and effective implementation of the wildlife management program. This is the personnel who is the technical specialist within the organization and advises the senior management supervises wildlife control records, identified wildlife risks, and proposes updates of the wildlife management program to the senior management. Wildlife controllers carry out surveillance of wildlife activity on the aerodrome. They record the activity and advise the duty airside officers on the detected wildlife risks. They implement the wildlife control measures in accordance to the wildlife management program. So they are the eyes and ears for the line manager or the WHM officer, the wildlife controllers maintain surveillance around the aerodrome. They carry out inspections, identify wildlife, specific wildlife that are present near the vicinity of the aerodrome. And they also help in finding out what is attracting these wildlife to the aerodrome. They record these data and carry out analysis to minimize the risk related to these wildlife activities at the aerodrome. To act as additional eyes and ears for the wildlife controllers, the airside duty officers are also responsible for taking appropriate decisions including notification to the air traffic services concerning the aircraft operations on the aerodrome based on reported wildlife. They also advise the personnel of wildlife control unit of any wildlife occurrences and incidents for further analysis and mitigation. The aerodrome operator can also take the help of wildlife chasers that are deployed at different locations across the runway. The aerodrome operator can also make use of the external wildlife chasers as deemed appropriate. It is important to underline that they always work under the airport operator and that they follow the orders of the wildlife controllers. And these are the personnel that are present at different locations deployed by the airport operator carry out immediate response to wildlife activity most likely around the runway. Now that we have understood the organizational setup for managing wildlife hazards at an airport, let us understand how the risk associated to wildlife hazards are identified and how their assessments are carried out. The first step to managing wildlife hazards is to assess the level of risk that each of the species of animals pose to aircraft operations at an air airport. What this basically means is you can understand the risk posed by a, let's say a sparrow strike is not the same as risk posed by a strike of huge bird, let's say the Asian open bill. So they have different severity when they strike with an aircraft. So it is important to understand the level of risk that each of these species pose to the operations of aircraft. The risk assessment is more than simply serving the species found at and around the aerodrome, it involves assessing the likelihood of these species striking an aircraft and the probability and the extent of damage that they may result in. This allows the manager to prioritize their management actions and target high risk species. The risk management or the risk assessment should also identify the biological factors that cause different wildlife species to be present near the vicinity of the airport. 
Identification of these factors will greatly aid in formulation of the wildlife hazard management plan. That means it is very important to identify what is making the airport a likely shelter for wildlife so that we can target so that we can target our resources accordingly to make the airport inhabitable for such wildlife species. There are several methods of conducting risk assessment of wildlife hazards. In the most basic form, a risk assessment determines the level of risk that each of these species of wildlife present based on the combination of probability that it will be struck by an aircraft and the severity of the outcome. So based on the risk assessment, the prioritization of the resources is done by the management. The total number of wildlife strikes should not be used as the only measure of risk or performance of the wildlife control measures at an aerodrome. The aerodrome operators also conduct an inventory of birds attracting sites on the vicinity of the airport, paying particular attention to the approach and departure corridors. So there may be a chance that there is a huge wildlife activity near the airport, but the probability of them being struck with an aircraft is less. So this does not mean that the aerodrome is having good wildlife hazard management. It is only a matter of time that this wildlife can get can strike an aircraft and it can be a catastrophic incident. So the number of strikes should not be the only indicator of the effectiveness of wildlife hazard management plan. The wildlife live on the aerodrome and around the aerodrome property for a variety of reasons. However, they are attracted by the essentials of life which are food, water and shelter. The typical examples of things that make the airport more favorable for the wildlife is agricultural activities near the aerodrome like fertilizing, plowing and harvesting, open dumping of garbage, garbage dumps, landfills, sewage treatments and disposals, open lakes, ponds, water reservoirs, swamps, open terrain and grassland, warm pavement and roof surfaces are a great attractant for wildlife. There are trees, shrubs, bushes which also attract particular type of wildlife. Buildings, gutters, hangars, unused aerodrome equipments are also a great place for animals to seek shelter. There may be aircraft parked long haul, the engines of which are a place where birds put up nests. There may be snakes sheltering there. The lights, there are specific lights which are also great attractant for insects. So there are many factors in and around the airport which can attract wildlife. Now, based on the results of risk assessment, an action plan or the wildlife management plan is developed to eliminate, reduce and mitigate the risk of wildlife. Each aerodrome implements a wildlife management program tailored to the conditions on site. Based on the airport and the factors that attract wildlife at that particular airport, a wildlife management program is developed. This program should include both habitat management and active wildlife control measures and might include lethal methods subject to local wildlife regulations. The aerodrome should be made unattractive for wildlife by adoption of habitat management strategies adapted for the most dangerous type of wildlife that is being targeted. There are different methods and different ways to make the airport less attractive for wildlife, which can be fencing of the aerodrome, not allowing external wildlife to enter the aerodrome, removal of bushes and dead wood, removal of fruit trees which are a great attractant for different wildlife species, use of spikes on locations which can act as a shelter or may attract birds like use of spikes on the signage boards which do not allow the birds to sit on the sign board, removal of cadavers and insects, closing of garbage bins and FOD policy. It should also be made mandatory to not allow disposal of food waste or eating at air side because this is a great attractant for wildlife. The water bodies are a great attractant for wildlife. So putting protecting these water bodies using balls and nets can also deter wildlife from coming near these sources. Steeper shores towards water surfaces, less attractive Agriculture may be adopted like cultivation of beets, potatoes, shikori, turnips can be carried out that are less attractive to wildlife. The airport op operator can also adopt the long grass policy to make 
the airport less attractive to birds because shorter the grass the more exposed the insects are on the mud that are more attractant to birds to predate on so there are different methods an airport operator can adopt based on the most dangerous type of wildlife that are being targeted based on the wildlife management program now we have understood ways to make the airport less attractive for wildlife in addition to reducing the attractiveness of the site it is important to avoid creating new habitats of wildlife on the airport the most effective method of wildlife habitat control at applied in airport is the grassy management of the grassy areas most birds that are dangerous to aircraft prefer short grass only partridges and pigeons and small low height birds prefer long grasses a long grass policy is no final solution and can only be successful if intensive grass maintenance is applied so the shorter the grass makes the insects that are present within the grass more exposed to the birds and as the birds see these insects they are more attracted to these areas and we create new habitats so maintaining the appropriate length of grass based on the wildlife that is most be found at the airport is very crucial step to reduce the risk related to wildlife activity at an aerodrome and it is a great method to make the airport less attractive to wildlife there are several other ways adopted by the airport operator to make the airport less attractive to wildlife they are based on rigorous risk assessment and identification of wildlife at an airport we will go through these measures one by one in part 2 of this video do stay tuned for more such updates if you have any question related to this part of the video you can comment down below and we will try our best to clarify them that is all for part 1 of wildlife hazard management at an airport if you like our work do not forget to like share and subscribe because your support is our greatest motivation you can comment down below what more videos you'd like to watch on aviation app do stay tuned for part 2 of this video where we'll discuss various other methods to reduce wildlife activity at an airport